The concepts I'll be covering in this video are things I picked up while learning and teaching Guilty Gear Exard. Despite the context, these philosophies have become surprisingly useful not only in other fighting games, but in my life outside of fighting games as well. I've met many fighting game fans throughout the years who have tried to get into Guilty Gear. More often than not, I see the game dropped out of frustration before they even scratch the surface. As a result, my focus as a mentor is more rooted in how to learn, more so than what to learn. This information isn't guaranteed to make you the next Omito, but it will hopefully give you the perspective needed to approach Guilty Gear with a more constructive mindset. A few common criticisms I've heard Guilty Gear receive is a dislike for varied character weight, varied character size, varied wake-up timing. These aspects of the game make combo routes inconsistent between different character matchups. They serve as a limitation and effectively prevent combo memorization during the early learning phases, which sets a lot of new players back. The thinking goes a little something like this. I can't pull off these combos consistently in a real match, which makes me lose the match, which means I'm bad at this game. This mentality is demoralizing and ends up being the reason most anyone will quit early on. Similarly, at an intermediate level, the thinking goes something like, I need to grind training mode so that I can improve and do better in tournament. For each character matchup, I should practice specific situations and their optimal responses. If I don't grind out all of these situations, I just won't be able to respond and I'll end up losing. The knowledge we have of character-specific situations and their proper responses is commonly called matchup knowledge, or matchup experience. If you want to make progress beyond a certain point, matchup knowledge is important to have. I'm certainly not discounting its value, but getting hung up on it too early can potentially hold you back, or even worse, demoralize you. Studying matchups in training mode is important, but there's far more value to be found in studying these things during a match instead. Some of you might be thinking, but AZ, I'm pretty bad at picking up things on the fly like that. This is where a change in your perspective comes into play. It takes looking at fights a certain way to be able to absorb and process matchup specific concepts. The average player is focused on winning, and when that's your focus, it's easy to miss out on a ton of valuable information. Guilty Gear, and the sum of its parts, is intentionally designed to induce stress. It's fast, <laughs> it's metal, Guilty Gear, and it rewards playing aggressively. Once distilled, the game becomes who can stay calm and focused under the pressure. Self-awareness and knowledge of your own character is key here. Allow me to get specific for a moment. I know the properties of Slayer's 5k quite well compared to Jam's 5k because I main Slayer. I'm intimately familiar with my own character's moves, not necessarily other characters' moves, and how they interact with mine. In Guilty Gear, there is a mechanic called Attack Level, which is a universal property for all moves that strike. Since attack level creates a universal set of stats across all of XR's moves, I don't need to memorize that Jam's J2K can be countered by X on block, but that X can counter level 2 moves at Y range. The short version of this is, learn general concepts before matchup specifics. Now learning general concepts isn't necessarily going to be an advantage that will help you win matches more often, but that's not the point. What it will do for you is it will improve your ability to analyze situations quickly, which is much more valuable in the long term. The important part is that you simply aren't thinking about as much. This is why I advise new players to not memorize combos. Even though that seems like an obvious step in the learning process, When I first sat down with combo mode, and was faced with Slayer's 6 hit air combo off of crosswise heal, it took me nearly an entire weekend to perform it consistently. 
It should not have taken me that long, and it was only applicable to a few weight classes. How I was finally able to learn it was to instead learn the properties of each individual move that the combo consisted of. I couldn't recite that BNB if you asked me to, but what I do know is that if I hit someone with crosswise heal and they are a lightweight, I can easily hit them with 5H. If they're a medium weight, well I can still hit them with a 5H, but I have to time it well. Or I can opt for an easier but less damaging close slash bar slash follow up. And if they're a heavyweight, well I know that the 5H won't hit, and the close slash bar slash follow up becomes my route of choice. Notice I'm not talking about any specific character here, and I'm also not talking about the combo. So when I link into that 5H from crosswise heal, Instead of thinking about that entire combo, my thought is simply, I just anti-aired with 5H. What can I do from that? I'm essentially thinking about each move and what I do off of each. Instead of response X and combo Y is an optimal punish for specific situation Z. The detriment is that you will drop a lot of combos during this process. The long-term benefit is a much more adaptable and improvisational style of fighting. You're no longer trying to play out a long string of memorized buttons and timings for every matchup, which was frustrating. You'll find yourself analyzing your own moment-to-moment -moment gameplay instead. Your thought process is simplified from, well if character X does Y, I can respond with A, B, Roman cancel, D, jump cancel, J, D, J, 2, E, etc, etc. That massive binder of data you're recalling for each character matchup is transformed into something like, I landed X on weight class Y, so now I can choose from route A or B. When a new player becomes obsessed with memorizing a long string of buttons, or hundreds of character specific situations, it creates unnecessary noise and confusion. Noise is frustrating, and it makes it difficult to focus. So our goal is to reduce moment-to-moment -moment mental noise during a match. Let's talk about being focused on winning. The common perspective is, my win is what tells me I'm doing well. So if I don't win, then I'm bad. This is just plain wrong and is easily the biggest culprit in holding players of all skill levels back from their true potential. Not only does it make you feel shitty because you have an expectation of yourself that's often unrealistic, but it also creates additional noise when you're still just trying to learn the game. When you're focused on the win, and memorizing huge chunks of data to be recalled during a match, it'll be something like, okay I've landed a hit. Which hit from the 5, 6, and 8 hit combos I was grinding an hour ago do I do next? Okay, they just threw my burst, which means I'm a little less likely to win. Okay, my health is lower than theirs. That means I'm losing, and less likely to win. Yep, I didn't win, just like I thought. I'm really bad at this game. Maybe I'm wasting my time. When you're no longer thinking about the win, and start thinking moment to moment, it goes a little something like, okay, I've landed a hit, which means I can do one of three moves next. Okay, they just threw my burst, it's gone. So that's no longer an option for now. My health is low, so trading hits is no longer an option. Okay, the match is over. What did I learn that I can apply to the next match? By shifting your focus from situational knowledge to situational awareness, you end up thinking about a lot less, creating more opportunities for you to pay attention to what is happening in that moment. Focusing on the win is being focused on the future, which creates anxiety. Focusing on the loss is being focused on the past, which creates regret, neither of which serve to benefit you. Focusing on the present allows you to see what's happening and what the result is, and to practice reacting accordingly. You're no longer getting upset about the loss because it doesn't matter, and it never did. 
Previously, you were achieving one win that represented an entire match, effectively providing little value to you outside of self-validation. Now your wins, several per round, are every moment where you solved that situation correctly. The three times you called out their jump and successfully anti-aired. Or adding one more hit before the knockdown in a combo you've been putting together. So now, just like Slayer, you'll never lose. You've shifted your focus into a constant state of analyzing your current situation, noting your own response to it, and adjusting when necessary. No matter the end result, every encounter becomes another opportunity to learn more for the next one. When you clear out the noise, you'll find that you learn new things surprisingly fast. You've stopped tripping over your own ego. You've stopped fearing the future and regretting the past. You're instead just getting a consistent feed of new and useful information. Most people nowadays say, I have no time. Of course you don't. Because you are not aware of the present. You know, the present is represented on your watch by a hairline that is as thin as possible as is consistent with visibility. And so everybody thinks the present is instead of the, the, the